Hello Tribe, Ed Fleischer here. We're going to kind of go over and kick off this morning's lesson. Um, we're going to continue in our faith journey series. So today we're going to look at truth and where we go to find truth. So first question I have is where do you go when you have the need to find the answer to a question? Well, for me, my first instinct is to go to the internet, search Google, um, see what results come back. But how do you know that the results you got back are correct? Well, for me, I look for multiple results that all line up. And let me share an example with you of a time in my work career where I didn't do that. Um, we had something I needed to get done in a fairly short period of time. Uh, and I was going through and looking for something on the internet to deal with how to handle what I was looking to do in the office. Unfortunately, I just looked at that first test result. And that first test or that first search result came back and I went with it and ended up costing me probably a day and a half to figure out that that wasn't the right answer to the question that I was looking for, that it was dealing with a different type of computer, a different type of language, and it wasn't what I was looking to do. Um, got a couple other examples of things that you may have heard over time or had been taught in school or just heard that you assumed was true. You know, uh, first is Napoleon was an extremely short person. The answer to that is false. He was actually an average height person. Second, and I know I heard this from my parents over the years, um, that if you swallow gum, it will take seven years to digest. Well, that's false. Gum isn't digestible, and it passes through the system at the same rate that normal food does. Last, you can see the Great Wall of China from the moon. This is also false. Nothing man-made is visible from up there. Um, so today, like I said, we're going to continue in the series of faith of our own. Um, we're going to look at 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 17. In this, we're, we will see where Paul encourages Timothy and us to hold on to truth. Okay, and I, I'm going to read you those verses now. Uh, 14, but as you continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those whom you've learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness. So the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So let's kind of look at, at what, what Paul is kind of saying to Timothy through this. Um, first, let's look in 14. In 14, Paul gives Timothy a heads up on how we, or how he would be able to face the things that he, that would be coming. Um, Paul basically says, ground yourself in the Bible, because out of it comes strength to deal with with these things. Guys, it takes faith and courage to remain in things we have learned in church, in tribe, uh, in small group, um, from your parents. When common culture and everything around us is pushing and pulling us away from these teachings, it also takes self-discipline and practice of our faith and honesty when we are inundated with all kinds of pressures from the world around us, leading us in a different direction. Our friends may be pulling us one way. Our parents may be pulling us in a different direction. You've just got so much pressure going on around you that it's tough to stay self-disciplined. Um, Paul is calling both Timothy and us to have that faith and self-discipline. Uh, we can gain those through prayer, worship, study of the scripture. Um, those are the most common ways to know which way we should go and what is truth 
and what is not truth. Um, in 15, Paul tells Timothy that from an early age, he was taught the scriptures um, and how to live in a Christian manner. Because of Timothy's upbringing, um, he was equipped to be from a, from a young age to be a, a preacher. Timothy was taught the scriptures by his grandmother and his mother. Uh, Paul also tells us the scripture makes us wise for salvation. Okay? And if you have any doubt in that, I recommend that the next time the, the Gideons come into the church, um, talk to one of them. The Gideons are the people who put the Bibles in hotel room drawers and other places. They have endless stories about people who have read those Bibles and have come to know Christ as a result. People whose lives have been transformed by their encounter with Scripture. Um, you know, each one of us has our own story on how Scripture and a friend's use of Scripture or a Sunday school teacher's use of Scripture has transformed our lives. Um, or it may be your small group leader. So in as we continue through in 16 and 17, Paul tells us that all Scripture, where all Scripture comes from, they are it, they all the scriptures are inspired words of God. They are to be used as the blueprint on how we are to live our life as Christians. You know, with that illustration brings to my mind uh, an example of where in, back in Genesis, where God breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, you know. So God's breath brings life where there is no life. God has breathed into his scriptures the breath of life and has given them life so that those scriptures might inspire and instruct us, breathing their, breathing their breath of life into us, okay? So as we continue to move through, um, like I said before, you need to get multiple sources for anything to be accurate, in my opinion. So with that being said, if you look at Psalms 119.11, it tells us that I, I have hidden your word in my heart that, you might not, that I might not sin against you. And, and this is where we go that if we keep that the scriptures in us, then we'll know what is expected of us, how to live our lives. Um, so let me, let me ask you guys, where do you get your information? Do you go to your friends? Do you go to social media? Do you go to news outlets? Or do you gather it from the internet? Or do you use a combination of those? And if you're using those, how do you know that information that you are getting is the right information that you want to live your life by? Remember, God gave us the scriptures as the roadmap of truth for our lives. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day, Lord. Thank you for this time to come in and to, to just look and to study your word, Lord, to, to see what it has to say in our lives and how it should be that roadmap that we use to live our lives. Lord, I just ask that you be with us as a tribe right now to help kind of guide us through this different and weird time. Lord, I ask that you, you be with all of the students, all of the leaders, Lord, as we continue to try and open up to what it is you're leading us to do and how we should be living our lives. Lord, I just ask all these things in your son's name. Amen. All right, guys, head off to small group. Your, your leaders will kind of unpack it a little further. And I'll see you later.